Maraza is is I'd say you know Maraza is a, is an entertainer. Um, first and foremost, for all intents and purposes, an entertainer and a storyteller. Some guy was was trying to some guy was claiming to be my dad. You know, and what I'm saying now would come as a shock to my my family, like oh and Bam and, and, and everyone else. There was this guy who who said, you know, he was my father and he had, you know, around the time of my birth, I think he dated my mother and stuff. So I've missed my father for so long. Now it's 2000 and it's 2008. I don't have a job. I just won Jamily versus, and I just won Channel O MC Africa. I got 20,000 rand from Jamily versus, but then I spent it on a studio, which I have now left in Stanga because I don't have a computer to run the equipment. I went to Josie. I thought I was going to make it. I thought my album was going to be coming out. Turns out my album was not going to come out. Bloody, you know, all these disappointments. What would I, if my dad was here, I'd be in tertiary. If my dad was here, I probably would never have ended up going to Josie in the first place because my dad would have built a big house for us. In Stanga, I'd be happy. My mom would be here. We'd be working. Me and my mom would be talking. I was home and none of this bling bling thing ever mattered. None of it. I went home, they were playing music I made five years ago and they loved it. And I wasn't, I wasn't creating that music anymore. I felt like that music had held me back, but I was looking at the wrong target. And that's why I always missed it. When my target was somewhere else collecting dust. So I went back to that and that's why it's, it's fun of, it's, um, one has a language called this Fanagalo, you know. I was at home a couple of times and I was going to see my old teachers and when I see them with my grandfather, they start speaking this Fanagalo to my grandfather. But I'm going to the shops and, you know, some of the Indian guys from my neighborhood have seen me on TV. When I'm Fanagalo, I'm talking. Hey, I'm going to go to the TV. I'm going to go to the TV. I'm going to go I'm going to present. I'm going to go to the TV. I'm going to go to the music. Oh, when I rap a DJ. DJ. No, no, no. Because they think everyone is a DJ. That side. I know I'm a rapper, I'm a Zala, I'm a Palam Tolo, I'm a Zala keyboard, Zala King uh, producer, and that is that is a huge part of who I am, you know. I I, I grew up being spoken to like that. And at some point, Manga Besang Saz, I used to think that was so patronizing. Why are you speaking to me in that language? You assume that I don't know English. I've been trying to avoid the empty conversation because. I don't want to be taken out of context. Now, as much as I am serious, as much as I'm serious about trying to be honest with myself and my listeners, I also am very much aware of how your honesty can land in the other ear and how it can be taken. You know, back to what I was saying about competition in hip hop, right? I'm competing with, with MT in the eyes of the public, in the eyes of the consumer. I'm competing with MT, AKA anyone who's making it. Uh, in a stratosphere that I'm trying to get to, I'm competing for the same space. So if I say I held MT with APCD, it seems like I am now trying to latch onto the shine that he currently has. When that's not the case, Umtembeni um, Devu is is like a little brother to me, man. You know, uh, I love him. We love him. You know, we all love him. Like uh, he was, he's part of the family. We've known each other for so long. We've worked together for so long. We've been through things. We've lived together. We've shared plates. We've shared money. We've shared beds. We've shared clothing. So, but most importantly, we always shared knowledge. He was a member of Dionysus, but we worked off a relationship based on trust, based on brotherhood, and based on friendship, based on the family bond we had. So there were no contracts involved, you know? Um, and eventually, uh, Ambitious came and he started, he signed with Ambitious. You know, I feel like, I feel like that might be part of the reason why we don't see each other as much anymore because I introduced MT to his current producer. I was working with that producer, but me and this producer haven't spoken in such a long time and I've tried to contact people, but I feel like, I don't know whether they might think I might be bitter about the situation. Uguti was with me, I invested in, you know, music videos with him, I invested in photo shoots, studio time, and I never got to make any of that money back through him. I think they might be, I think actually they might think 
I harbor those feelings. And that's why they stay away from me as much as possible. But that couldn't be further from the truth, you know? Even though they, they, there was never a time where they said, yo, uh, we're trying to join Ambitious, so we're trying to end working with you, right? They never said that at any point. It just, it was just silent and quiet. But when that happened, I was like, yes! Because I couldn't do for MT what Ambitious did for him. There was absolutely no way. And I can't say I love my brother if I'm going to hold him back from achieving his success just because that success didn't come directly through me. Yeah, boy? I continued to, to work really hard to support my son. I continued to, to send money home in, in it. But later on, you know, like I said, we're constantly learning about ourselves, what we want and how we want it and why we want it. I realized that at some point I was proud that my, my, my son is well fed, there's always money, you know. I obviously can't be with him because the mother didn't want me to be with him unless I take her fully, but also our culture didn't allow. And then eventually I realized, Uti, I'm not happy being an ATM dad. And it's not parenting, money doesn't raise children, you know. So then I started the battle to try and get custody of my son. Um, and in the past two to three years, that's what I've been trying to do, you know. I've, and now I live with my son. It came about in, in, a, in a way that's not really nice, to be honest. And as much as I'm very honest with, with my personal life, I'd rather keep that out because, um, you know, I, I can tell you though, um, it was a struggle, it was a fight, and people got hurt, but now I have my son and he's happy.